Yeah, I guess we're good to go. All right. We've been summoned just across the newswire. I, I received the bat signal. Uh, we have to apparently talk about Pokemon. Yeah, there's an in-depth investigation we need to do in so, regards to Pokemon. So I've been, uh, I, I had to cancel my plans, which involved sitting in, in that room right there watching TV. Instead, I'm sitting in this room right here. Um I got oblivious the call. to what's about to happen. I could just got the call from the deep state. No, this is probably going to be the most retarded thing we ever do. But, I mean, as that's a hard bar to clear. We've done some really dumb shit. This is what the Patreon is for. Um, so we'll see. Our mistakes and yeah, errors. Our mistakes that you'll pay for. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> um, no, I don't really. I guess it popped into my head when the new game came out, and I was like, this is rad, but they should tell the real story. The, the hard, gritty tale? Well, it's much darker than people think. It's it's a pretty dark tale when you actually analyze it. It should be noted, you are a uh, a gigantic Pokemon fan. You, I am you've... born from the Pokemon era. It is it explains most things about me. I I, I would I would dare to say I'm a master. Oh yes, certainly. Yes, uh, yes. I don't know fuck all about Pokemon anymore. The last the last version I played, I specifically remember why I stopped playing. Uh-huh. I had Pokemon Yellow, the the first one where like Pikachu followed you around and yeah, shit. Yeah. I got caught. There was, was a cash grab. There was there was some sort of uh, what do they call the guys you got to battle the the like trainers trainers. So it was uh, some sort of trainer who was like on a boat, and uh-huh. I did a shitty save file where like all my Pokemon were about to die, and I couldn't get off the boat to go heal them and then come back. So I I just had like a dead Pokemon and I had to battle and and there was just no way for me to win and I <laughs> I got fed up and instead of figuring it out or trying something new I stopped playing Pokemon. You just forever. Quit. Yeah. You you know it's funny. So my biggest Pokemon tantrum. I don't remember what happened. I remember <laughs> it's the most autistic fucking sentence. I remember I lost and it irritated me so much. And I probably was probably like I don't know ten. Uh-huh. That I took out the game cartridge and I put it on the... He means 10 days ago. I put it in front of my door. <laughs> it was just like, you can fucking take it. In front of your bedroom door? Like no, the in front house. of the house door. On like, the porch. Yeah, you right wanted the, the mailman door. to yeah, remove I, it from I don't your... know who I thought was going to take it. I was just like, you can take it. I'm done with this shit. The Pokemon confiscator <laughs> is coming to take your shit? Yeah, I just remember I was that angry that I was like, I can't play this fucking game again. All right. So what, what kind of starting Pokemon were you? Like, which which one? Who who did uh, you choose? Who well, was you your... always choose Charmander unless you're a faggot. I mean, I guess if you're a bitch, you choose Charmander. No, because Charizard always... is statistically speaking the best Pokemon in the game. Well, I know the like literal statistics. I know the literal stats for this shit. I have literally done the research. I I always you understand. pick Squirtle. When I start a new Pokemon game, I flesh out who my six is going to be at the start. <laughs> you know, and I do this at a whole different level. You really do, because I uh, I always winged it. And I, I stole these games most of the time, which is double funny. The only thing I knew is that in the original red and blue version, when it was starting up, I think you had to hold left and press B, and you could flip the color scheme. So if you had red, you could make it blue. If you had blue, you could make it red. I had a Game Shark, so I could do whatever the fuck I wanted. Those were the good old days. And I had emulators, so I stole most of the games. And on the computer, it's very easy to cheat. I... Wish I had played with emulators because I think I would have liked it more because I know you can like speed up how quick you can walk. And sometimes yeah. that would drive oh, me you fucking can, insane. You can play the game at like 200% speed. It's great. That's how I would beat like the entire game in like two hours. Well, the later games eventually also had like bicycles and shit, right? Yeah, they've got it to the point now where you barely ever walk. Okay, that that uh, that would have helped because some of the original games were tremendously tedious. But yeah, emulators is like one of the first mass white collar crimes. So let's uh why don't we dig into whatever the fuck you've you this is the first time you have written and printed out something. Yeah, I printed I out used notes. to do this back in the old days. This is the episode whatever 130 something. This is the first time I've seen you do this. Well, which part shows of it, your passion for Pokemon. It really, I take this seriously, and I genuinely want to be the person who writes the live action. You want to be the very best. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I genu- I love that song. That song, honestly, <laughs> is how I live my life. If you Google the lyrics, like, that's that's how I want to live life. I just want to be the very best that like there no ever, one was. ever was. Yeah, yeah. It's just all, 
to catch them all is my real test. It's kind of slavery-ish, so I don't kind of like that one. A little one. bit. It's a little bondage But whatever. If I have to enslave a few people, then so be it. Gotta crack eggs to make an omelet. Um, but yeah, I believe I could, <laughs> right? That's a very dismissive way to describe slavery. Yeah. Ah, you gotta break a few eggs. What are you gonna do? It's over with, all right? What are we yeah. gonna do about it? Uh, but yeah, this is something I consider. I've, you know, I've had this mulling around for a while. I didn't just... Clearly. It came out because I'd already <laughs> had it. Yeah, I'd already been thinking about it. It was in the old memory tank. Because it's a much uh, more interesting story uh, if you give it the darkness that it's due. Because it really is a story where you have animals battle basically to death. So is this like, uh, you, you know how the comic books start doing like gritty reboots? Is this your imagining of like a gritty reboot of Pokemon? Yeah, kind of. Kind like of. Like a, a they, hardened edge version? They got close with that one where they did uh, the Pikachu one where he was like with, a, uh, a Ryan human. Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, where he was like a human who got turned into a Pikachu. They, they got close there with like the Pokemon fighting and shit, but, uh. but they held their punches. And I feel like it's a much more interesting story. So I figured, I figured we'd highlight just from the first uh, first season and a half, which is pretty much the game, the first game. Okay. Pokemon. Okay, so I kind of Red know. and blue. Yeah, because there's hints throughout it, um, but the show, for obvious reasons, doesn't go there most of the time. I, I feel I should also point out, multiple times this week when I walked into the living room, I found you watching Pokemon. I had to do the research. You think I was going to do this <laughs> half-assed? A grown fucking man <laughs> watching oh, I, Pokemon in the middle of the day, stoned oh, out of his mind. Oh, I've done that when I, at my darkest periods. There are <laughs> certain things I go to. Pokemon is uh, the, the. It reminds me that the real the real battle is to catch them all. So you gotta you gotta keep training. Yeah, my you, aunt, it's the only way to get through it. My aunt once walked in on me when I was losing my mind in Utah, <laughs> and I was watching Pokemon, and she just looked and started laughing and going, you watching Pokemon? I was like, yeah, it gives me strength. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, your life raft. And she just laughed, and she was like, okay. Because I had just failed a drug test, so she got it. I was, <laughs> I was sleeping on a couch in a fucking attic. Yeah, it was good times. <laughs> it was good times. Yeah, on a... This one foot couch, you roll over and you hit the ground. It was fun. I had fun back then. Yeah, it was a it was a simpler time when uh, we both were complete messes. Yeah. So when I need to escape reality, this is what I go to: the dark and terrible world of Pokemon, of Pokemon. slavery. <laughs> yeah. So my one, I for some reason I wrote down uh, my one primary source. His name is a uh, Deep Throat You. <laughs> <laughs> As in a, yeah, right, you put, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> for the people who don't know Pokemon, although if you don't know You're Pokemon. You're to have to explain a lot to me. If you don't know Pokemon, this is going to be hard to get most of my jokes, which is okay, because it'll just be like a comedian bombing. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm expecting. So there's so, a Pokemon <laughs> named Raichu, so Deep Throat You. <laughs> it's very clever. There it's you very, go. It's there very you go. clever. Well, about... like, like Deep Throat for the, the Vietnam War? No, no, I understood. Oh, okay, no, okay. Understood. Well, our audience <laughs> is stupid. They play Pokemon. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so, first of all, Let's examine some of the fundamentals. Please. So, so catching a Pokemon right. is really just sneaking up on an animal in the wild. Yeah, yeah. Beating it to near death. Yeah. So that you can capture it for slavery. By throwing a ball at it. Well, it's more complex than that. You see, and we'll get to this later, but the Pokeballs are funded by the military-industrial complex. <laughs> They're used to capture Pokemon and use them for weaponized purposes. Okay, that's true. I remember yeah. that. So, so that is, that's, they literally turned, created technology to turn Pokemon into matter that they could confine in a small ball. Now, they say that the Pokemon are having fun in there, but we know that's just propaganda. Yeah, if I may interject with a question, um, when you catch a Pokemon, does that, is its allegiance automatically shifted to the capturer, or is there if, like a breaking in period? If you are the one who captures it, uh -huh. it's uh, allegiant to you. Okay. If you get it via a trade, or if it's like a legendary Pokemon and its level is higher than the uh, every badge you earn, you can control Pokemon like ten levels higher. Okay. So if you catch like a level seventy Pokemon, but you only have a the fourth badge, you probably can't. Yeah, like, it won't obey. It'll just do whatever the fuck it wants okay, in a battle. Okay, it thinks it's better than you. Yeah, exactly. Um, you okay, so it's like the wand system in Harry Potter. If you're the one yeah. who disarms someone, the wand but will for, listen yeah. to you. For the most part, if you catch it or if you get it, it, it obeys you. It okay. doesn't have a choice, okay. I suppose. Okay. Uh, Pikachu is a rare example that's outside the norm. 
because it refuses to go into Pokeball, because I assume it realizes that Claustrophobic. That's, I think it realizes that's hell. That's the Nat Turner of Pokemon? It's it's rebelling against the, the slavery of the Pokeball? Probably. I don't know what the inside of the Pokeball looks like. Nobody goes into that. I tried to find it, but they don't they don't quite examine it. I imagine that. it's like that phone booth in Doctor Who where it's huge on the inside. The uh, That's what they want you to think. Yeah. They want you to think it's comfortable. That's the fake news. Yeah, like you know, I mean <laughs> I don't know, the slaves they have plenty of room out there. You know, they got a whole little house. The the yeah, the uh what the fuck's the word I'm looking for? Where where would they keep Jews? Internment camps. Internment they, camps. They have tennis courts. That's the one they always go with. Yeah, it's a little closer to how the Romans did it when they made them fight to the death in the Colosseum for fun. Okay. Because that's pretty much what they did with Pokemon to an extent. They didn't even have them. I mean, yeah, the Pokemon are used for attack and shit, but that's normal. The cruel part is having them battle to death. I had never really thought about it, but uh, thinking about it now, it it is kind of like if we took the X-Men and put them in slavery. It's these creatures with uh, magic powers. That we've decided to to control for our own benefits. Well, they're not necessarily magic. They're part of the the environment. Like they're used for good for like natural purposes. Like they run the power plants. They do a lot of uh, maintenance. They put that weird electrode one. Yeah, they like a electron magneton. You know, they use them all the time. Okay, all right. Yeah. So they're useful. They have functional purposes. They fought in the the war, which we'll talk about later. So they're more like German shepherds. We can use them as a uh, drug sniffing dogs, or bomb sniffing dogs, or yeah. sheep herding dogs. They're animals who serve purposes. Like some of them are weak, but they can be functionally useful. Okay, they're a polypurpose animal. And then some are just good for destruction, like Charizard, which is just a dragon <laughs> that burns things. Um. So yeah. So the idea of catching is horrifying to begin with, and then. To take it a step further, in the original game, you have Bill, who Bill, is Bill, known Bill, Bill. for uh, creating technology that goes a little too far and maybe was getting into some crazy things. And I was thinking maybe that's Bill as in Bill Gates. Ooh, it could be. I, I, I like where your head's at. Because he's created human Pokemon hybrids. Which was Bill the guy you... No, Professor Oak's the guy you get your Pokemon from. Yeah, we'll get to him later. But okay. uh, no, Bill was the man... <laughs> I'm glad we, we'll get to him. Bill was the man you encountered who was who had accidentally turned himself into like a Pokemon or I guess transplanted his mind into a Pokemon. Oh, so he's on some like transhumanism shit. Yeah, yeah, they don't address it as such, but that's exactly what he's doing. And they're, you have they're to like, going to breed us with the Charizards. Yeah, you have they're, to turn him. You have to turn him back into a person, and then that's how you know it's not someone's PC; it's Bill's PC. Okay. Yeah, so he's doing some weird shit, and I was like, "Hmm, Bill, maybe isn't Bill Gates?" Yeah, I see it. Bill Gates transhumanism. It's it's there. Um, and then we move on. We move on to trainers. Who are trainers? Well, trainers are really often just children who've been kicked out of their home. They're often just yes. orphans, because remember they're just wandering the str- the like the the woods. Yeah, Ash Ash is like ten years old or something when his mom wants to fuck Professor Oak. Yeah, so Ash is a <laughs> bastard child. Yeah, and you never they don't even address who his father is, let alone leave it as a question. They just literally never talk about it. But his mom's just getting piped by every pokey uh, poke well, master. Let's, let's move on a little. As in, who's the fuck is Ash's dad? Uh, the possibilities. Uh, Ash's mom. This is my personal favorite. Okay. So, so, and I got this from from Deep Throat. Deep Throat you. Uh, <laughs> Ash's mom was a drug addict who who sold herself to get her fix. Okay. And she fucked so many Johns that she, she just doesn't know who his father lost is. Track. Yeah, she just doesn't know, so she doesn't even bring it up. All right. What about this? What What if Ash's mom is a stand-in for Mary Magdalene? And he and she just got pregnant, like, divine, yeah, divinely, yeah, like a Pokemon fucked her. So the Pokemon are gods, is the problem. What? Yes, yes. When did that happen? They've expanded the mythology quite thoroughly. This isn't in the first game, so we're not going to cover it. But okay, this is the advanced section. Yes, but that's a possibility. We could take that into account because that would also explain it if she just never brings it up. Immaculate conception. That's yeah, a, yeah. But they don't talk. The table. They don't talk about God much, but a Pokemon created like time and space. So the Pokemon are also supposed to have like are the progenitors of humans. So that's a possibility. It's it's on the table. Let's put it that way. It's a very convoluted system. It's weird. You know, we got to incorporate evolution into trading cards. <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. Um, 
So, so then the second one is we have Professor Oak was just a sugar daddy who got Ash's uh-huh. mom pregnant, but they had to cover it up because obviously Gary was Professor Oak's grandson, so he that, didn't want to cause a fuss in the city. That is the way I always kind of saw it, is I, I always assume Professor Oak the, was the, Dick and Ash's mom. The anime actually provides more evidence to this because Ash's mom is alone, but Professor Oak is often there, and he lives very close. Let's watch some Pokemon hentai. And then he That's... takes a particular a particular interest in Ash, who's really just a fuck up that nobody wanted to raise. So he's got to he's got to prove himself. He's unloved by his parents or parent, and as uh, such, seeks validation through Pokemon training. Well, his mother did the best she could. I mean, I, she I'm raised, not sure I agree with that. I mean, she was a crack whore. I mean, she did the best. She lived a good life. She got clean when Ash finally left. She was. She did the best she could for being a crack whore. Yeah, but I mean, once again, she kicked a 10-year-old out of the house and said, no, you got to go fight animals in, in gambling situations to the death. Certainly a questionable decision as a parent. But she wasn't the at only best. one. It was a norm at the time, and we'll expound on this. And it was like the 50s. Kids could go play. They wouldn't be bothered. We'll expound on, no, it was like the 70s. We'll expound on this further. But, uh, yeah, children were just expected to leave the house and travel in the woods and fight uh, animals and subjugate them to slavery. Well, that's how you become a man. That's uh, why everyone's a fucking bitch nowadays. We weren't out fighting animals in the woods. But, yes, yeah, so so moving on to the, the final fundamental, battles are essentially just glorified dog fights. Yeah. Uh, now they Mike don't ad- Vick is my favorite Pokemon trainer. I've done that before. Now, in the TV, sh- in, in the games, they address this. In the TV show, they don't. Because in the games, you are fighting, and if you win, you get money at the end. You get money in the games? If you win battles, yes. Oh, I don't, I don't remember which, that. You gotta buy potions and Pokeballs and shit, uh, which implies that you're gambling on these battles that you have with random strangers in forests and caves. <laughs> yes. So that makes it a little darker. Because then you have ten-year-olds who have been abandoned by their parents, who are fighting random strangers in in dark caverns for money. I'm sorry, I I, I searched Pokemon hentai. It's terribly and it, dark. I know it left no, me no, speechless no. too. <laughs> no, it was more what's on my laptop oh. screen that left me. Uh, we can't show that on YouTube. Well, I probably shouldn't have pushed that button. <laughs> We're gonna have to blur that out. I'll cut that out. Let me. I didn't. So I thought when I searched, uh huh, that. That when I clicked it, safe search would be on, and and I wouldn't immediately be led to a lot of hardcore Pokemon related pornography. I mean, you probably knew what you were going to get when you searched that. Well, I planned to get there. I didn't think it would just take me there automatically. It knew what you were looking for. Now, luckily, from the photos I'm seeing, no one's fucking a Pokemon. But I'm sure... Oh, well, wow. Okay. If you look far enough, I'm sure that's what you're going to come across. Man, you hentai dudes are some sick fucks. Yeah, I think they should have their own list. I'm I'm uncomfortable. Anyways. You should be uncomfortable. It was a cartoon being fucked. But we'll get to <laughs> bestiality because Team Rocket's into some weird shit. Team Red Rocket. Uh, So so those are the, the genuine... The general fundamentals of the game. Okay, that's the basis of uh, our Pokemon pyramid. We've now, established the fundamentals. Now we can move on to, to Ash's gang. So we have Brock, who we meet in the show. Right. And he's left to run the gym. He's the, the rock guy, right? Brock yes. the rock. The rock gym, correct. Okay. Uh, so so his father is also a crack addict. <laughs> and he also <laughs> I'm uses, seeing a theme here. He also uses heroin, but crack is his main... Uh, vice. So he's a speedball kind of guy. Ooh, yeah. rock Pokemon, rock cocaine. There you okay, go. I got there it. There you go. So he's abandoned his family. Uh, <laughs> okay. And the mother has died tragically of cancer. This is what happened in the show. Yes. This is also my deep research from Deep Throat You. Um, <laughs> so, so Ash has been left, or excuse me, rock, Brock has been left to run the gym. Right. Uh, and Ash comes and he beats because he, he beats him because he cheats and says off the fire alarm. And really? water's obviously, yes, water's obviously uh, super effective against rock Pokemon. What a bitch. He what? cheats at the first gym? It was his first gym. He had to get some luck. All right. And then somehow electricity works on rocks. I don't know. Yeah, Apparently, I, water I, is I all don't it understand. Takes. But the p- bigger point is he wins, and Brock, instead of realizing he needs to 
if you don't know, Brock has a very big family. His father was a slut uh, and got many, many women pregnant. But his mother couldn't leave the marriage because there's no divorce in that country. <laughs> so she had to raise all the children of these whores. So, so, so Brock's father just didn't believe in condoms. Pretty much. They don't exist in the world. Um, so, so Brock has you like, they have, you know, they have like sheepskin condoms or they're like Pikachu skin condoms. Um, they don't touch on it that. It shoots electric. Oh, they don't cover that in the well, show. They I eat, see. They eat some Pokemon, but they don't know if they use them for textile purposes. Interesting. So possibly, I think they're just probably Catholic and raw dogging it. But, uh, Brock's mother's left to raise like 10 children and she dies. So Brock is left to raise most of them. And after he loses, he decides to leave. Solid. He's, listen, he's just mirroring what he was taught by his parents. Well, he wants which to, is when things get tough, fucking bail. That or die. Yes, but he was left. Uh, you know, he wants to become a Pokemon uh, breeder, so he wants to make Pokemon fuck. Okay, and that's a little a, weird. That's a noble cause. How and do you get rocks to fuck? You don't want to know. <laughs> um, you don't want to know. That, you gotta Google that to find out. <laughs> I think actually. I just saw the answer, and I'm not sure I want to go back to it. Um, now they allude in the episode that Brock's father is homeless, but near the gym, so he might be coming back to either rob them or run the gym. I don't know, but you'll find that there's a theme with any of the men mm -hmm. left. They're terrible people. Okay. It's not good people left. It's a very dark world. They do so. Uh, so far, all the men have abandoned their family. Brock yes, is in the process of abandoning what's left of his family. Yes, it's a pretty common theme. And then he and Ash decide to team up as scumbags. Well, when young children are wandering the forest, it's best to travel with a, a group. And I believe the ages are Ash is 10 and Brock is like 17. So maybe he's, maybe he's acting as a big brother or there's some weirder shit going on. I don't want to uh, besmirch his name. Yeah. With no uh, evidence. But we can move on to Misty, who is this, the third cog and maybe more important in our wheel. Um, I just saw a lot of Misty in that Google search I made. <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of, there was a hefty dose of that Misty. Would, that would make sense. Once again, this, is she over 18 in the cartoon? No, but by now she is. Let's cut that part out. No. <laughs> so, so they never age anybody up, which is part of the problem, but I, I won't knock them for that. It's made them a lot of money. But uh, so Misty is basically the Pokemon world's version of the Kardashians. So just a vapid whore. Well, except she's ugly, so they kicked her out of the house. Because her family runs the gym. Now, the problem might be I've seen a lot of shit on Reddit that involves Misty cosplay, and it's always attractive women. I don't remember Misty being unattractive in the show. Well, no, she's not, but they needed to sell merch. Gotcha. Okay. So, so she's hot, but she's just not hot enough to be one of the three running the gym. But they do bankrupt the gym, so Misty ends up taking it over, which is a real empowering moment, but we don't need to cover that today. So she's like the girl next door hot, or back in the, the old high school movies where it'd be like a nerd wearing glasses and in a ponytail, but would yeah. she let her hair down? Yeah, she's a tomboy okay. who, who just okay. hasn't realized she's hot yet. She's um, an ugly duckling or whatever yeah. the duck Pokemon is. Psyduck. She does have one of those. She's an ugly Psyduck. Okay. Yes. There you go. Ooh, more there metaphors. You go. Listen, there you go. listen, I'm um, fucking catching on quick. Yeah, so she's been kicked out of her house, and Ash steals her bike because Pikachu's dying <laughs> on one of the earlier episodes, and he needs to get it to a Poke Center. Okay. Um, so that's why she follows him. I surmise that she's probably been kicked out of her house, and she's selling her body to make ends meet. Makes um, the most sense, yes. Yeah, so I think, I think Brock is probably the pimp in this situation and also acts as security, and Ash is just a retard. In a classic pimp-ho relationship. Well, it's more of uh, they manage to come together because of Ash, so he might as well provide protection while she sells her ass so they don't have to sleep on the sidewalk. Makes sense. Yes. it's Once again, it's a very dark origin story when you take it from where it comes. Although for a country with socialized animal health care, you would think they would have, uh, you know, the ability for children to sleep inside. You without would, having to pay. You would think so, but the kids don't actually make the money. It's the fighting and animals. Imagine if LeBron James could tear his ACL and be ready to play the next day. It'd make you way more money. 
Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. And so I'd still be watching the Lakers as opposed to skipping the last 10 games with him and AD out. Yeah, so instead of using this technology to heal people, they're just making it so that you can fight monsters No more one often. wants to watch Dennis Schroeder be the number one option. Uh-huh, because who <laughs> funds Pokemon centers? The military-industrial complex. Okay. Exactly, okay. yes. Um, so, so we can move on to some of the gym leaders, and I'll just use a few examples because this will go hours if I don't stop. <laughs> um, so, so gyms are really just the product of the military-industrial complex post the Great Pokemon War, All which right. we'll get to in a second. Um, so in reality, they're just how uh, former military, high-ranking military officials... Uh, and you know, corporate lobbyists cash in in their in their retirement. Would this be sort of like an underground military base, like uh, a deep underground military base, closer to like a Raytheon? Okay, okay, so like a like publicly evil corporation. Yeah, publicly known, but they're part of dark groups that questionably make, ethical. Yeah, they make weapons to kill civilians. Okay. Yeah. So so it's it's how you get paid publicly, but it's a front. For, for the military-industrial complex. Gotcha. They're secretly um, selling weapons to the Iranians. Yeah, and it's known, but the government's communists and they need to make money, so they look the other way. Mm. Um, it's a fucked-up world, um, post the Great War, which we'll <laughs> talk about in a second. The the Great... Is that is it actually called the Great War? So the Great, the, Por- the Great Pokemon War has been a, a theory... That was your first slur, by the way. You've Thank been you. doing very well. He's drunk, um, by the way, in case that's not obvious um, by this point. So the Great Pokemon <laughs> War has been a theory that's been going around for a while. But I noticed it early on, because if you paid attention okay. to the dialogue in the early games, uh, there were some there were some lines that made you think, like, hmm, maybe something weird's going on. So this is this is a fan theory. Yeah, they don't address this gotcha. in the game. They'd never be able to keep a, a 7 rating. Yeah, it's hard to be an E-rated um, game when you're talking about the Great War. Yeah, but doing uh, old children's cartoons is like gritty gritty adult car- cartoons is in vogue now, so we might as well do it. Get the reboot. Um, yeah, so it's a part of the military-industrial complex, and we come upon Surge, Lieutenant Surge, in the game. He oh, wow, runs, I had forgot about him. He runs the third gym, and he's a veteran. And uh-huh. by that, I mean he's a war criminal. Terrible PTSD. Yeah, he's a war criminal. He did he did horrific things in the Great Pokemon War. But obviously they needed to reward him with high-ranking status to cover it up. Right, um, right. So he goes, Ish, yeah, I killed those gooks, but it was for the country, okay? <laughs> so he's Pokemon Operation Paperclip. Yes, it's noted that he brutally wins his battles and sends Pokemon to the hospital and more importantly, he gets he gets off on uh, destroying young children's dreams. So a bit of a, a masochist. Yeah, he's a terrible person. Okay. Uh, he he's like the person who cut the face off prostitutes in Vietnam. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so all soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> so the Great Pokemon War, real quick. Uh, it was an atrocity, and it went on mm-hmm. for for decades. Uh huh. Um, and if you notice in the game, there are no adult males, pretty much between the age of. 20 and 40. That's at a least, big fucking age. At least none. Age range. At least none that aren't like gym leaders. Right. Or perverts. Okay. Um, so one of the theories, and I've always felt this was good, but they didn't get the research I did from Deep Throat You. Um, so, so the great Pokemon war happened, and it was terrible. And it really, it wiped out an entire generation of males. So they're all, all right. gone in so, the games. So all military-aged men are theoretically killed in this war. Yeah, mostly. Mostly. Okay. It was a very gruesome war. And the only ones left are much like in real war, people who were college educated and had the, the bourgeoisie jobs. Yes, Donald, survived. Donald Trump's and Bill Clinton's. Yes, the Bone Spurs um, saved them from the Great Pokemon War. Yeah, so the people running the gyms either didn't fight in the war or were in the military and this is their Hush, hush payment. Mm. Um, so there's very little people. There's very few people in all the cities because most of them are dead. Um, hem, hence, mom's uh, Ash's mom had to be a prostitute during the war because that <laughs> so was the only way you could make money. She was part of the uh, the Joy Division. She was just sleeping with soldiers. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. All from right. from it's enemy territories, um, she was a spy for the Viet Cong in okay. a few points. Um, so yeah, so it's a terrible, it's a terrible post-apocalyptic pretty much country. They've, they've seen a lot of wars. Most of the, the adult and, uh, uh, father aged males are gone. Okay. Um, or they're running the gym or they work for Team Rocket. So it's not a good place 
Hence, the kids are being kicked out to go make money uh, like they're from Central America. And, and Team Rocket would be like an Axis power type. Uh, we'll get to Team Rocket. They're okay. kind of a combination of the mafia mixed with like uh, the CIA and uh, dark budget technologies. They're, but they run all the prostitution and heroin and cocaine. Team rings. Rocket is Blackwater. Yeah, okay, pretty much okay. mixed with like the cartels. Gotcha. Because so they the do sell Sinaloa drugs. Sinaloa mixed with Blackwater. Yeah, and they traffic Pokemon. We'll get into them in detail in in a minute. Um, so so the the Great Pokemon War is really what sets the scene for this whole thing, which mm-hmm. would be a fantastic prequel for them to do because it's terribly dark. You know, like you have Surge uh, hooking up a Muslim to a ride sh- like a ride to do his balls. Sure the Pokemon's a Muslim. No, but I mean, they'll, they'll, <laughs> just, but they'll have to for practical purposes. We need he decides. some. We need some. Okay, like they worship like the great Pokemon Lugia or some shit. I don't okay, know. go ahead. Whatever they want to uh, make Muhammad seem like. Okay. Um. So they have like yeah, like a terrorist with a Raichu hooked up to his balls, and they're just torturing him. <laughs> okay. And Surge is like, "Give me the fucking answer." And he, you know, and he's, Surge is a Guido in a land of Asians. No, he's a Guido in the show. Is he really? Yeah. No. T- yes, you should take a thunderstone <laughs> and use it on your Pikachu to turn him into a Raichu. Yeah, he he endorses uh, turning a Pokemon into, forcing it to evolve against its will. It's okay. rather inhumane. So Surge isn't big on consent. Well, in a war, you need power. And, right. and Raichu is statistically more powerful than a Pikachu. So fuck it. You know, you got to kill. You got to do what you got to do. War is a dark time and you got to, you know. Exactly. And imagine a war with Pokemon. Yeah. It's got to be horrifying. It's all I can think about now. It's got to be horrifying. Could you imagine World War II where there's just like wheezing, gassing Jews? They... I don't know what the Pokemon equivalent uh, is. That what that weird gas coughing is? Yes, it's mustard yes. gas. Yes, wheezing is the evolved <laughs> yes. form of coughing. Okay. Yes. So him gassing Jews, if you understand the the metaphor there. Uh, I'm getting it there. Yes. All right. All right. I need the people at at the Pokemon company to get like wildly drunk to assume this is a good idea. But it makes it more interesting, right? There's context there because the wheezing are doing it doing it against their will. I'm not sure they're, they're just doing their job for your Islamophobic Holocaust <laughs> rendition of Pokemon. But no, but they're I'm, killing I'm on board. Both are dying, you see, because people people are the problem. Pokemon are just being used. Right. They're simply the guns. They're, yeah. The gun is not the guns don't kill people. Yeah. People kill people. Yeah, like a wheezing just happens to produce chemicals. Now if you use mustard gas to kill Hebrews, then, I mean, yeah, that's on the people. There's Weezing. a lot of Hebrew Pokemon? Yeah. Oh, no, Weezing doesn't have a choice. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so then let's move on to a few. There Actually, there is one more uh, possibility for Ash's father is that he fought in the war and just died, but they mm-hmm. don't even ever bring him up in either the game or the TV show. So, Which is weird, because if he did die, you would think he'd be like fighting for his father's honor or some bullshit. Yeah, that would be the story they'd go with, but I guess they didn't want to bring war into a children's game. It's a little dark, yes. Well, I mean, it is comp- when you don't think that they're having animals fight to the death. It just kind of fits the theme at that point. Because then battling is a more humane form of war. Do they actually, they don't actually die in the battles though, right? Well, they call it whiting out. Right. Which... I've done that a few times. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you can interpret whatever the fuck you wanted to. I got an eight you ball can, cut with something. And <laughs> yeah, you can assume it's just like Mike Tyson knocking someone out to the point where they won't move, or they're dead and you're reviving them from death. Which is a much scarier thought, because then you involve this element of uh, uh, necromancy. And you're doing it for money. Weird. So, uh, so we got... Greedy necromancers yeah, it's reviving horrifying. animals. Again, they funded a technology to revive the dead just so you could have them brawl. Mm. Horrifying. It is, it is. It's truly the darkest timeline. But it makes sense coming from a society that just murdered most of the people. Now, some want to speculate that it was a comet that might have wiped out a lot of people. An age-selective comet, though? Well, comets happen a lot in Pokemon lore, but I like the idea of a war more because then you see Pokemon slaughtering humans. And I think that's more realistic because if we went to war, we would use Pokemon. So who was the war against, though? Was it? Uh, So one of the theories is it was Johto, which is the first area you start in, and Kanto, which I believe is the second area you start in. The map spreads out to like seven places Okay. at the current timeline. So it's very possible you could just have a skirmish between two neighboring countries. 
Mm, um, okay. Or you can expand it further. Either way, all you have to know is there were a lot of atrocities and war crimes that went on. There were a lot of uh, there were a lot of people who were charred to death by Pokemon. Okay, Charizard charred you know, to death. Nuts hooked up to electric Pokemon. Gotcha. Waterboarded by water Pokemon. They really are mind controlled. All purpose. Mind controlled by psychic Pokemon. There's an infinite amount of possibilities for torture. I mean, they're your best friend. So in a world that we must Unless you know, you're defend, the one captured. Look, if you teach me and I teach you, then Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so they became dangerous weapons of war. Um, and if you scale that down, we have battles and gyms. And gyms make revenue because you're gambling for money right. in every battle. And you take that money and you invest it into black ops and, and secret technology. And the Pokemon world acknowledges that aliens are real. But they don't really explore it too so much. So these these sort of underground fight clubs are almost uh, like the CIA running coke to fund for the other gyms. operations. Yeah, the gyms okay. are, are military industrial complex fronts. Okay. Um, the battles you have in the wild are just uh, gang you wars. Know, yeah, gang wars, bike gangs, orphans fighting for money to survive. Um, basically, normal shit. Yeah, normal shit. They avoid the prostitution, but we know what the Pokemon centers are for. You know, Nurse Joy is a pimp. <laughs> She's the mama son. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same family running running every Pokemon Center. That is suspicious. One one How family can they be in so many places. One family runs all the police department because it's women. Nepotism, man. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. Or it could be cloning. I don't know. They can clone Pokemon. Maybe they can clone people. Yet another horrifying implication. Yeah, or it's just an aristocracy. I'm not sure. I haven't done the research yet. Deep throat. <laughs> She's trying to give me some some inside information. Um, so, so I submitted a few FOIA requests. Certainly. Yeah. As um, one does. Um, so I was able to find out that Saffron City, who has the psychic gym, uh -huh. is actually just a CIA front to, uh, investigate paranormal and psychic research. So it's, uh, it's like that one college here that did all the shit on Banachek. Yeah, it's like Yuri Geller's, because it's really just retards trying to bend spoons. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the gym is very profitable. Um, I don't know what they've come out with, but they've got a lot of people and it's starting to look like a cult, but funded mm. by the government. Mm. So it's kind of, they're David Wilcox of the Pokemon world. A little bit, a little bit. And then I, I found out through a similar FOIA request that Celadon City, uh, which is the grass gym in the first right. game, uh, who also sells perfumes, uh, is also a CIA front to make chemical weapons. Makes sense. It's like the, the Al Sharif chemical factory that Bill Clinton bombed in the late 90s. Yeah, because we need to supply the dissident rebels with weapons to fight the wars in other countries so that we can subvert their government. Understood. Yeah. Um, the was gym... that the first page? Did we just get through the first page? Or uh, is that... No, that was page two. Oh, okay. Excuse okay. me. Look, it could have been nine pages, but I, I made the <laughs> I font it smaller. Been. Well, it's just funny. We started this with this. This might be a 15 minute episode. I told you it could be either a 15 minute episode. I was hoping to keep it under 30, but maybe like a 45 minute. Well, you know, we're at 40 right now. Well, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to look at the clock. That's why I printed out the notes. No, that's fine. I'm, um, I'm having a good time learning about this. So we can move on because I want to emphasize how awful the people are in this in this world. Because right. it gets glossed over and they bring them into the story, particularly in the show. Uh -huh. But they, you know, they code it up. It's propaganda. Um, so, so on one example, we have, um, the, the punchy Pokemon uh -huh. as it's called. Um, and this is an episode where we come across a father who has also abandoned his entire family, um, so that he can train a, a Hitmonchan okay. to fight in the, the P1 like Grand Prix, I believe. Which now, is a f now, Hitman Chan is like the weird kickboxing one, isn't it? No, that's it? the punching one. Hitmon Lee is the kicking one. God damn. Yes, because, you know, you know, Bruce Lee. Right, right. It makes um, sense. Yeah, the Japanese are very racist. <laughs> um, so, so he's training his Hitmon Chan to, to fight in what's a, a glorified boxing match. Okay. And he's abandoned his daughter for years. Um, These people love fucking but hate raising their kids. Yes, it's a very common theme. So he's abandoned his family in this pursuit, um, and eventually Ash stumbles upon his daughter, um, who, uh -oh. who tries to help Ash because he's training a uh, Mankey who's gone loose, who eventually evolves into a primate. But the, the primary storyline is you have this father, yes, who's abandoned his family to go chase his dream of becoming a fighting Pokemon master. 
which seems like a noble profession, but really... Not it's really, just, not when you bail on your family to try and uh, achieve it. Yes, but it's a glorified boxing championship, so it makes sense, because they were usually terrible people as well. I'm sorry for that awful noise. I'm I, trying to I'll reattach try, my microphone. I'll try to delete it when I can read straight. Um, so he <laughs> abandons his family, and, and uh -huh. Ash stumbles upon him and, and helps push him to win the championship, so he finally goes home. Right. Um, I don't know how his wife is doing at this point, but the more important point <laughs> she, is she's that devastated. Probably, she's probably like not gonna forgive him for leaving the family. But his daughter, you know, she's got daddy issues. Certainly. Um. So, so the more important point that he's a terrible person. Um. And then the next, the next example we can use is an episode titled "The Evie Brothers." Now, Evie, because you don't know, I don't no, explain. No, I know who Evie is. The oh, little, yeah. little fox-looking fella. Sure, yeah. Uh, that Pokemon can evolve into a whole plethora of other Pokemon via either a evolution stone, which is kind of like hormone therapy. Um, so it's tra Evie is trans. Kind of, but it happens uh, automatically. Um, and there's okay. other ways to evolve it, but that's the main, the main one. Gotcha. It can evolve into all sorts of things. But in the episode, this is a, a uber-wealthy... Uh, elitist family, you know, like stone money family, evolution stones. They've sold okay. them, sold All them right. for generations. They're uh, De Beers. Yeah, they, they yeah. Got their their version of diamonds. Yeah, kind of Rothschild esque. All right. So they're very rich, and uh, the youngest of uh, the generations, their their grandchild, um, has an Eevee, but he's gay, and he doesn't want to evolve it yet. <laughs> okay. But his brothers are trying to pressure him into evolving it because this is who they are. And they get other um, elite trainers, quote unquote, to mm -hmm. join their cult. And the evolution stones are just how they get them in. And then they blackmail them with them. And it's, it's a little bit like Jeffrey Epstein. Okay. So they blackmail okay. them so into the like cult. So it's like a honeypot type thing. They bring them in and then they, they spring the, uh, the twist on them. Exactly. And, stuck. and then once they do that, they're stuck. Yeah. Um, so, so, but the youngest one sees this as horrifying. So he runs right. away. Um, and eventually Ash brings him back. And he talks the family into not forcing him to evolve into some monstrosity that is, he doesn't want to be, um, which is where they want you to think it ends. But really, when Ash leaves, they still force him into doing it, and, and it just continues the cycle. So there Damn. are... Cycle of abuse. Yeah, yeah. The evolution stones are kind of like forcing uh, a nine-year-old to go through hormone therapy. Or it's horrifying. They it, don't have a choice. It's like uh, when the, the what you're talking about, Will, is Gary Coleman, when he was, f theoretically, I've heard the theory that he was put on, uh, like, hormone blockers or puberty or puberty blockers to keep him from growing up, so he always looked like that little dude. Kind of, so, but it makes him more dangerous. So, yes, the opposite of that. Yeah, yeah, so they were making them, they were evolved. It was discovered during the war because they needed them to kill civilians. Like a Captain America super serum type thing. Yeah, because an Eevee is like just a, a glorified pet. But a Flareon or a Jolteon, you know, that's that's a weapon. I do remember Flareon and Jolteon, I think, for that matter. Vaporeon, those were the first three. Okay. Then now there's like eight of them, because pretty much any way, like you can literally run in the daytime, and if it levels properly, it'll evolve. <laughs> they had to stretch it out. Look, they didn't expect to go 15 seasons, but this is why we're focusing on the first one. Because it's what I would consider the Old Testament. Yes, the Old I was just about to say yeah, that. Yeah, the first show, before they had to start tying in the video game. Now it's literally just like the plot of the video game. Because kids are retarded. Yeah. It's and they a, can't understand nuance, like like trafficking and, and death. <laughs> and slavery. Yeah, and slavery, because they're, they're coddling them. Um, but, so yeah, so, this, so they're terrible people. And, and another example from the game is the USS Ant. Which is really just the little St. James. That's the fucking boat I got stuck on, I think. Yes, and if you cheat properly, you can get Mew by diving to the bottom of the ocean. But in reality, it's just the little St. James, because they were, they were trafficking both children and Pokemon. Right, the boat was shady. Yes, was... Bill Gates funded it. Ooh, all right. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. Partly also funded by Team Rocket. So, so these, so it's basically the the real world equivalent would be Raytheon and Bill Gates have have teamed up to buy a a super yacht funded by the mafia. Yes, where yes. bizarre animal fights occur. So in 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 the game, you fight people on it. In the yeah. TV show, Jesse and James go on the boat. Who are and Jesse and James? They are the main goofs of Team Rocket, the right. thugs 
who who uh, stalk a child and try to thieve his Pokemon. Along with, uh, what's their main Pokemon there? Meowth. We will get yeah. to him later. He's actually the best episode in the series, but that's how we're going to close. Okay. Um, so in this episode, they, they try to ruse Ash into trading his Pokemon for a Magikarp, which is pretty much useless unless you force it to evolve. It's really just used for sushi. Uh-huh. Um, but the ship crashes and they sink to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, and Ash has to use his water Pokemon to save both himself and Team Rocket because he's the only good person in this series. Um, right. It's the story. It's a coming of age story where yeah, a, a he, man who is surrounded by nothing but bastard children eventually learns to be less of a bastard. Yeah, he's 10, though. And he's he's actually, I think, taking the boat out because it's trafficking children for prostitution. And Ash, okay. is, Ash is the hero in our story. Remember. So he planted some sort of like depth charge on the boat to get it to sink. Uh, inadvertently, because he almost died at the bottom of the ocean. They almost kill him a lot for a 10-year-old. That's what um, they want you to think. Yeah, so I think he was just taking out uh, Team Rocket's infrastructure so he could mm. save this uh, horrible world. So that was his Pearl Harbor, where he was taking out the, the military base, basically. Yeah, whether he knew it or not, because he does some things unintentionally. Um, he saves the world quite a bit for a 10-year-old. I would argue it's not unintentional because it's God's plan. He, he is do, exact, divinely, exactly, divinely led. Exactly. He doesn't know it, but he's really just an, an angel of the Lord. Right. Uh, who's also a Pokemon. Um, so, so let's move on to Team Rocket now that we're talking about them. Please. Because they are our big bad of this world. They're pretty much, if you took the Mafia mm. and you combined them with like Raytheon and all those Northrop Grumman, and the CIA, and pretty much all vices in this world. They run the casinos, uh, they, they steal Pokemon and traffic them, they do the same thing to children. So all things sin run through Team Rocket. Yes, yes. Um, and they're led by the notorious Giovanni, uh, Giovanni Linguini. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very real name. No, that's not his name. I don't remember his <laughs> name. It, it's Giovanni something, but Linguini okay. was funnier. Um, so he's he's the Don at the moment, and he's got, you know, slick back. He looks like a, a Guido. He's got slick back Pat hair. Bradley. Yeah, he likes the Knicks pretty much. <laughs> um, so he's from Brooklyn. Uh, so he runs Team Rocket at the moment. Um, so So you have to wonder, what do they have a bigger purpose? Because mm. they are the big bad, and there has to be a reason. You're fighting them other than to stop like sex trafficking. Um, but they don't expand upon that in the game. So I like to think that they're actually a very political organization and they're donating money to a bunch of different politicians and they're in their pocket and they're obviously manipulating them. So they're, this post they're Pokemon Antifa. No, no, no. They're like uh, dark money. Oh, George Soros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, okay. they're donating to PACs. They've got politicians in their pocket. Gotcha. You know, they run the prostitution ring, so they have blackmail. Right. Yeah. So they're, they're influencing all the, the laws uh -huh. in this post-war world, um, which makes them very powerful. So we're, we're almost talking about, like, the mafia during the Prohibition era, where yeah. they, we're coming off a big war. If and the then mafia the brand, organized crime can step in to fill a lot of the gaps. Yeah, if like the mafia was funding the CIA while society recovers from World War II. Understood. Yeah, because they have all the money. You know, whores never go out of style. Even when people are poor, they still use their money for prostitutes. It's true. Yeah, so it's a very lucrative business. But they also get into donating to politicians. Um, they start, you know, developing weapons because obviously they're trafficking Pokemon. They so also th keep losing to Ash. So I guess, the, you know, they got to develop something so they don't. Well, that's propaganda. Look they, embarrassed. They want you to think they're losing. Ah, they, they yeah. got to come off as a weak enemy. That's uh, some yeah. Sun Tzu shit. Yeah, the TV show is just to kind of uh, divert your attention. It's propaganda. Yeah, in reality, they're selling uh, weapons of war in, in form of Pokemon to terrorists. Okay. Yeah, so they're funding rebel rebel terrorist groups in other countries. They're but the, the, CIA, the Reagan special. Yeah, the CIA does not one on their books, so they use Team Rocket. It's it's a mutually beneficial uh, organization. Okay, so yeah. they're they're a black operation. Exactly when they need when the government needs them. Mm. Um, so so Giovanni is the head <clears throat> of this organization, um, and eventually you take him out, but it keeps going. So I assume he's he's also a snitch, kind of like uh, the main guy in The Departed. <laughs> kind of like Whitey Bulger. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, murdering, he's murdering people in parking lots, but he's giving them information 
So it's, it's like his get out of jail free card. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's kind of Giovanni. Now also rumored he could be Ash's father. Interesting. As, as in like his whore of a mother fuck Giovanni, uh, but didn't tell anyone because she wanted to keep Ash safe. So like his father was a secret. It could also explain why Ash isn't immediately killed by Team Rocket. Perhaps exactly. the old man has, you know, a bit of a soft spot in yeah, his he, heart. He thinks it might be his child, but they don't have DNA testing yet. It's like uh, Luke and Darth Vader. Exactly. But Jesse and James are there to try and get some of his saliva. Interesting. Yeah. Did, did it like through a saliva swab or are they trying to? Uh, the Pokemon Center. Okay. Yeah, okay. Nurse Joy will run it off the books if you ask her to. <laughs> I mean, so if you look Slip at... Slip her some extra money. If you look at Jesse and James, I mean, Jesse is really just a runaway from an uber-rich family. With who great obvi- hair. Yeah, who obviously got pulled into Team Rocket via some sort of cult. Mm-hmm. Um, so now he's in Giovanni's pocket, but he's not competent because he... You know, he's like a Rothschild. He's never had to yes, make his he, own... He's an he's imbecile. Like, he's like Prince Andrew if he had to find a job. Yes. He doesn't know how to cook his own eggs. No, he can't even beat a 10-year-old. Yeah. And then then uh, Jesse, on the other hand... Excuse me, James is who we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Jesse, on the other hand, comes from a bike gang, which she ran mm-hmm. as a teenager, and they would rob people on the on the bike path. Uh, I think um, she was just sexed into the bike gang. I don't, well, I don't she think was the she leader, was the main... But I think she was tricking out the men, you know, because there needs to be a, a gay bike gang. It's a progressive world. Well, that's what we call equality. Yeah, it's, I, it's a very progressive bike gang. I do personally have one theory that instead of a war, it could have just been a widespread epidemic of homosexuality. And just none, like Alex Jones warns us. Yeah, and none of the men reproduced for like 15 years. They were just too busy sucking each other's dicks. Exactly, and it's a conservative <laughs> society, so they were ashamed. Wow, they, they sucked so many dicks, society almost died out. And they killed them all, yes. They had them all executed. To, to keep the next generation from realizing... From if we don't, catching the big gay. Yeah, because if we don't fuck, we're going to die out. Right. Um, now, the bestiality it led to was unintended, but, yeah, there are consequences to this type of stuff. Um, so, so moving on to from Team Rocket, there's one episode in particular where they're uh, running a franchise of bogus uh, Pokemon salons that okay. claim to have technology to make your Pokemon evolve without actually training it. Which is obviously not real. So this is kind of like the QAnon of the Pokemon universe because it okay. was just retarded and on the internet. Um, but they gave out coupons. So coupons? Br- exactly. Uh-uh. So if you brought your Pokemon in, they would take it. And in one case, they, they took a Psyduck and they taped its eyes up so that it was open. Like clockwork orange taping? Like if you took an Asian person and were mimicking them <laughs> opening their eyes <laughs> okay. in a very racist fashion, like I wouldn't do, okay. but what no, they do no, in the you show. Wouldn't do. You but wouldn't they, do. <laughs> but they do it in the show with the Psyduck, okay. and that's supposed to make them evolve. But in reality, they're just stealing Pokemon and trafficking them and then lying. Mm. But, but Ash stumbles upon this particular ruse and breaks it up. Which he's is like po- fucking Pokemon Forrest Gump. He's just... Yeah, he's retarded. Yeah, exactly. he's just stumbling his way into historic events. Exactly, but he's a very good master because you need to be a little autistic. He's like an autistic genius. You know, uh, he's retarded. Savant. Yeah, he's a retarded and everything else, but he's very good at Pokemon. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, he breaks up this ring, which is not run by Jesse and James because they're, they're the no, ones they're, who... No, they're like street hustlers. Well, they're just stupid, so they get put on you know tasks they're expected to fuck up. And they're they're abandoned most of the time, and really they're kind of just ind- independent contractors. Like they don't actually let them in. They get the a ten ninety nine from Team Rocket. Yeah, most of the time they just fail, so they're not a good example of Team Rocket. They're just made to make you think Team Rocket isn't is inept, but mm-hmm. in reality they're just funded by the government to supply Iraqis with bombs. It's uh, when a when a company donates to charity, like they donate a million dollars to charity, but then spend five million dollars on the propaganda telling you they donated a million dollars to charity. Yeah, it's, like the Clinton Foundation. Yes, exactly. 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 They're like Hillary Clinton. They're funding uh, rebel groups to overthrow their government, but we're doing it under the guise of like humanitarianism. The, the Pokemon Contra. Exactly. Exactly. We're we're trafficking them weapons, but we're denying it publicly. Um. So. So the last episode I want to close on, because this is the most realistic episode they do in the entire series, in my opinion, Okay, is uh, Go West, Young Meowth. Okay. Now, now, this is the episode where they depict Meowth learning how to speak English. Getting fucked in his Meowth. 
he does have to do some questionable things to make a living. You know, but look, I, he's a street cat. Judge. He's a street cat. But more importantly, he's a scientific miracle. He's the only Pokemon in this series uh -huh. who teaches himself how to speak English. Oh, yeah. Mewtwo. Everyone else just says their fucking name. Pikachu yes. and... Mewtwo is able to kind of talk via telepathy, but okay. he cannot speak English. Now, Meowth is a stray cat, stray mm -hmm. Meowth, uh, and he's starving to death. Uh-huh. And he sees a bunch of baseballs and hallucinates that they're food. So, of course, he just he tries to eat them. Okay. A, but they're a baseball. classic mirage. Yeah, but they're baseballs, so he can't eat them. But the people, uh, instead of feeding a starving creature, right. discover this, and they tie him up with rope, and they string him up to a tree uh -huh. and, and mock him for starving to death. So they lynch me out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you have to think, what kind of society produces little leaguers who are doing this? Uh -huh. Because it's a horrifying thing to do. This is a starving animal. It's, it's part of that McDougal triad of uh, a psychopathy. Yeah, yeah. These are, this is a, a country and a society that's been... Uh, bombed into a sociopathy that's really infected everyone, even the children. Okay, so there's just this weird sort of uh, nihilistic malaise that has covered all of Pokeland. Exactly, because the male adults didn't fight in the war, and uh. they feel guilty that all their friends are dead. Mm -hmm. um, so they, life is meaningless, and uh, therefore death is also... Uh, they're trying to make it up, so they're trying to catch them all. Um, right, right, hence, right, right. Hence the theme song. Um, but they can't because they're losers and they have bone spurs and they didn't fight in the war. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so the starving Meowth uh, is beaten near to death by the gang of Meowths led by a Persian uh -huh. <laughs> Pokemon, not a person. Okay. That's the evolved form of Meowth. But you can is imagine. Persian? Yeah, you can imagine it's a, it's a Persian. So, Meowth, it's bro, not that big of a fucking Bro, bro, jump. you work for me, my Meowth. Okay, you work for me, bro. My what? price, what is my price, bro? Okay, you're going to find this pussy, bro? Yes, no, that's that's the Pokemon's name. Okay. But it is also racist. You see where yes. some of the, the problems come in and why they should be open about They're a little on the nose. Yeah, they should be open about where this comes from. Um, so Meowth eventually is beaten near to death, but he joins the gang mm -hmm. because he's starving and they provide him food. Um, and eventually he finds this high-class female Meowth who he's obviously trying to fuck. Right, of course. Um, but she belongs to another uber-wealthy uh, aristocratic family. So we got a Romeo and Juliet situation going on here. Yeah, except for she tells Meowth that he's too poor to fuck her. What a stuck up bitch. Yeah, which is funny because eventually her family goes broke and she gets kicked mm, out onto the streets. Sweet justice. Yeah, she gets kicked out onto the streets, but instead of, you know, fucking Meowth because he's worked hard to earn that shit, mm. you know, learned how to speak English, walk on two legs. Once again, a scientific miracle. Right, he he's a bipedal animal. Yeah, he literally interprets between people and Pokemon in the show. Yeah. It's pretty incredible when you think about it, but we just kind of ignore that. It's a fantastic skill that Meowth developed. And he has a New York accent, what makes it, which is what makes it funny. <laughs> Does he? Yeah, most people have a New York accent, to be honest. Yeah, it's like if he was, uh, if he grew up on the streets of uh, New York. Okay, he, he's from the boroughs. Yeah, he's he's from there, like the Wu-Tang Clan. Okay. Um, so she joins the gang as well, and eventually... Meowth man? <laughs> yeah, so eventually Meowth leaves, because he's got to, you know, strike his own path. And uh -huh. he joins Team Rocket with right. Jesse and James. Yeah. Um... Largely ignored by Giovanni, but he's got bigger things to worry about. He's making weapons of mass destruction with Mewtwo. Um, so Meowth comes back to his hometown, and he finds this 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 pussy again. Uh huh. And he tries to tap that because now he's like a big boss. Right. Right. And he he's, defeats he's, the entire. He circled back to yeah. his his homeland. He's trying to return the the triumphant king. Yeah, it's when the boxer wins the title and comes home and expects, like, fuck his high school sweetheart. Right, right. Yeah. So J. Cole wrote a song about it. Exactly. <laughs> so Meowth returns and defeats the entire gang, including the Persian. Uh, and then this, this sucko bitch still turns him down and supports the leader of the gang because he's got a more that's steady harsh. In, He's got a more steady income. And I think that's the realest story they tell because that's real life. Yeah. You could come back. You've made it. You, you do everything you think is the right thing to do. Yeah, you defeat the old gang, everyone at home who, who bullied you. You prove it to the, the high school sweetheart who thought you were just a fag and friend-zoned you. Yeah, it turns out she still thinks you're a bit of a fag. She still thinks you're a fag. Wow. Yeah. yeah. A and truly it's called, moving tale. And do you know where they go? Huh. Hollywood in the show. Really? 
<laughs> really? Yeah. I, not not in California, but it's called Hollywood. Yes. Yes. It's it's actually what they call it in the show. Not in the game, which would be fun if you got to beat like the trans gym leader of the Hollywood gym. Uh-huh. And it was just like West Hollywood and it was just people turning like tricks and you could sign up for like grinder at one of the houses <laughs> that would be funny actually hey there's an open world version coming we don't know what's included in it it'd be fun if they let you create like your own city and your own gym because in the game and to, and in the tv show to an extent most of the cities are based around gyms and mountains mm-hmm. because that's the easiest place to uh sell drugs and kidnap children yeah, not a lot of, you know, police presence. No, the police are all women, and they're all white. So, obviously, police brutality is an issue. Gotcha. Yeah, because Brock is black. Ooh. Kind of fucked up they made the black guy's dad leave. Yeah, and then he's homeless. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. seems a little racist. It does seem very racist, although his siblings are white, which is what made me think that his mother was the whore. And his father just abandoned them. Gotcha. So maybe yeah. he, he flew into town as a star Pokemon trainer. He fucked Brock's mom. Well, after the war, he was a veteran. And instead of going back to run the gym, which is his duty, mm-hmm. he left his family and tried to become one of the final four. Yeah, he, he had dreams that yeah. he, he left to chase. Yeah. Foolishly. All, all of the adult males are out on the road trying to become something they'll never be. Like stand-up comedians. <laughs> They're out doing something that's never going to happen. But if you delude yourself enough and you make just enough money to live in a tent, you know, it's okay. You can pretend you're doing an entertainment job for a living. Yeah, no one cares that you're fighting, you know, 19-year-olds and 12-year-olds. Yes. Because Ash doesn't age, which I think is just a show oversight. Because if you age him up, he'd be about 19, 20 now. Okay. And if you were to let Still me... Still very young. Yes, exactly. But if you were to let me to write the live-action... Uh, you know, finish to this narrative, Ash would finally be coming back off like two years on the road. Mm. And he goes back and he recruits, he recruits his Charizard, who's been off as king of the Charizards. Okay. According to the show. So right, he's right, just, right, right, certainly. Yeah, he's impregnating a bunch of female Charizards. He's the new, you know, the new king of the Charizards. He's the stud. Yeah, so he has to go recruit him back for um, the, the championship Final Four series. Because Ash is a prodigy. He's well... He's acknowledged. I mean, he saved the world like four times. He's pretty much the child of prophecy. Mm-hmm. Um, so he recruits Charizard and Pidgeot, who abandons him in episode or season like two. Isn't so, Pidgeot kind of a, like a bitch Pogamon, though? Isn't uh, he not very good? No, He's they, a gave, pigeon. they gave Pidgeot respect in the final seasons, starting in like season four and five, because that's the final version of Pidgey, uh, Pidgey. Okay. And then it's Pidgeotto and Pidgeot. No, Pidgeot's pretty good, especially in the later seasons. Okay. Yeah. But but the important point is he travels back to recruit his old Pokemon, because obviously searching far and wide. Yeah, because he needs them to fight to the death for him. Um, so they come back, and then he shows up at the the uh the tournament, mm-hmm. and and Misty is pregnant, because Ash is obviously not wearing condoms. Certainly, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but he's well respected as a master and a prodigy, uh, and this is the elite eight. Um, Gary has given up his quest to become a Pokemon trainer because he realizes that it was just his parents' money getting him ahead in life. Yeah, he was just buying the best equipment. Exactly. So he gives up and he becomes a therapist. Um, So he's there cheering Ash on because they're no longer rivals. Gotcha. Because obviously Ash was better at being homeless. Um, (laughs) So so they come back and, and, and Gary is there cheering them on with Misty and Brock. And whatever the other people's names are that they later brought on to sell more games. Mm. Um, and Ash has got the whole crew back. And he wins the first match very easily. And the second match very easily. Because we have a, a forty an hour and 45 minute run time. Okay, um, okay. So those two are quick. Um, Team Rocket, you know, Jesse and James have given up their life. And now they just uh, sell merch. All right. That's an interesting. You know who else did that after a life of crime? Freeway Rick Ross. That's who, they got, that's who they got it from. After Giovanni, yeah. they switched to working for him. Okay. And he's trying to go legit, obviously. So gotcha. T-shirts, hats, you know, beanies. Definitely not cocaine anymore. Yeah. and they Definitely use, not. Yeah, they use Meowth as the, the, uh, the, the kingpin of the entire operation because he's very marketable. Mm-hmm. You know, the public loves him. Um, so Ash wins the first two battles very easily. And then the last two battles are very dramatic. But certainly, yes. But regardless, the first battle 
you have a very random Pokemon win, like one of his later Pokemon, like uh, uh, I think the Frog one, Togekiss, I believe, or whatever the fuck his name on. That would be fun. To- or Togekiss. Yeah, or Snorlax makes a comeback, and he sleeps through the battle, but he still wins because he's so fat that he blocks most of the roads. Ah. Uh. Yeah, but if you use a flute to wake him up, he's a very good Pokemon. My favorite Pokemon, to be honest, because he just gets high and falls asleep in front of the road, and then you have to, like, go find shit to wake him the fuck up. Seems like the army could have uh, synthesized a better super soldier. He's the most problematic homeless person, but he's a Pokemon that weighs, like, three tons. He's the homeless person who's just high on dope all day and just yeah, he's, asleep in his tent. He's nodding off in front of the bridge. Gotcha. Yeah, so, but if you wake him up, and you catch him, he's a very dangerous Pokemon, because he's huge. So Ash would, like, maybe call him back out, and that would get him through, like, the semifinals. And uh-huh. then in, like, the championship, I don't know who he would fight, because they replaced the final four every time, which I assume is partly because you're in a different region, but also because a 10-year-old keeps beating them. <laughs> yeah. But if, like, an 18-year-old beats him and retains the title and tries to fix this terrible world he's inhabited... You know, ridden by war, you know, illegal, you know. Rampant homosexuality, apparently. Yeah, you know, the mafia is running. The mafia is running drugs and prostitutes and they're funding uh, terrorist organizations. Uh, it's, It's a dark world. You know, nuclear war had just come. Yeah. And they do introduce nuclear Pokemon later on in the games. Terrifying. They don't acknowledge that that means that nuclear bombs were detonated on different continents, thus causing... Uh, an evolution to Pokemon who kill you via radiation. Okay. But it's nice to see them acknowledge that there was a terrible war early on. And that is what would make a fantastic HBO TV show. If you gave me, like, Game of Thrones, but instead of dragons, it was Charizards, I could do some stuff. Yeah, I am shocked that Nintendo hasn't reached out to you yet to they uh, will. try and make this. They I will after this. Shocked. And that's kind of my goal, because, like, if if the Snyder Cut can become a thing... And they give that, you know, dude whose daughter killed himself a fucking four-hour movie. Yeah. Clearly, Nintendo would come on board with me. Because nobody else is going to tell it like it is. And that's that's the only way to keep this this game moving forward, is to let Ash... It's child prostitution and gay bashing. Well, I let, agree. <laughs> let Ash finish his journey. Because they've changed the animation. So let's just introduce a new character. It's been 20 years. Yeah. Let's let Ash finish his journey... You know, age him up so that it doesn't seem like he's, you know, Peter Pan. Uh huh. And he's just traveling throughout the, the galaxy, not aging. Never progressing, yes. Well, progressing, but just never aging. Can you imagine if you were a ten-year-old doing this show? Man, that'd be way funnier. Hey, dude, do you ever look at Pokemon <laughs> yeah. and be like, man, they're trafficking children? Yeah, it's not the same. I'd be a lot funnier if I was ten. True, but you wouldn't enjoy it as much because you were like... But the drunk episodes would be way more entertaining. Yeah, because you don't Fetch have... me a child. You'd only have to drink like two shots. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a horrifying world they set up where survival is based upon having monsters fight to the death so yeah. random strangers can gamble for it. Yeah. And then you, you beat war criminals to get badges that let you fight in a pay-per-view that HBO sells for money. Uh-huh. So it's horrifying all the way around, but they present it as though you're just fighting for fun. And this this world is... But there's a seedy underbelly that they won't expose. And only you had the bravery to get drunk and ramble for an hour and 15 minutes about it. Not even an underbelly. It's right in front of you if you look at what's actually going on. Thinly veiled metaphor. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's not even... It's very... Like a thin condom. It's very, very thinly veiled. Gotcha. Yeah, like these condoms break usually. Ash's <laughs> mother used them. store condoms. Yeah, Ash's mother used them and she ended up with him. Well, as Ash's Pokemon journey came to an end, so much this episode, I'm glad I decided to cancel my plans for this. Hour 10. Yeah. I told you, look, either 15 <laughs> minutes, I hope to keep it under a you half hour. You told me multiple times before we started recording, 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes at the most. I was hoping, but you know, look. You get that Sky Vodka in you, you, you get, get some going, Adderall in you, you, yeah, get, you, yeah. you have thoughts and look, you gotta get them out. I understand. I'm not judging you for I'm it. trying to get a TV deal, is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and Pokemon needs to understand that in Japan, I get it. Look, all the males are dead, because it makes sense. The Japanese made this game. Uh, 
most of the males age like 20 to 35 got destroyed uh, in the bombs yeah. in World War II. So when you think of it in that regard, kind of makes sense. But also makes the game way more fun if Ash is battling through a war-torn country trying to put itself back together and the gyms are usually run by war criminals preparing for World War III. He's, he's fighting through the demons of society's past. Exactly. Ash is here to save us, but only by defeating war criminals and bankrupting the mafia. And as Ash had to catch them all, I have to go catch all the pills in your cabinet. <laughs> to, yeah, so to... this, is ever gonna be, this is either going to be the dumbest thing we ever do, Oh, I think that's safe. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good bet. That's safe. That's a pretty good bet. If it was in the but games, I also enjoyed it. Yeah, if it was in the games, it'd be like badge two, or even worse, this is going to do well, and I'm going to have to try and come up with another one of these, which won't be too hard because we have the Great Pokemon War, we have the post-apocalyptic theory. The mythology goes back uh, thousands of years. In fact, maybe we just watch the movie on the Patreon. Well, the movies uh, aren't very good after like movie three. I know. <laughs> I know. I've seen them. Well, I mean, one through three is pretty good. I got to admit, the whole Mewtwo <laughs> saga where they clone a Pokemon who takes over the world and puts everybody under a hypnosis while he controls Pokemon and creates clones. That's a metaphor for the mainstream media, blinding it's, the masses. Yeah, he's like CNN. It's very dark, in fact. Yeah. Alex Jones, I don't, there's not a comparable character in the game or the anime, but it would be fun if they added him. Like, folks, I'm telling you, like, well, Jeffrey Epstein is connected to Team Rocket, and we all know it. It's right there in the open. We got to sell a lot of these Pokeballs to fund the operation. I got a lot of Pokeball forts. Look, it helps you train them. It helps you learn TMs, you know, whatever you're doing. I mean, who do you think invented the Master Ball? A, a slave owner. Yeah, exactly. Team Rocket uh, funded by Jeffrey Epstein and Bill Gates. Makes perfect sense. All right. Yeah. I think uh, I think we learned a lot today. Yeah. And by that, I mean, I'm, I'm very confused and, Ex and exactly. slightly worried about your well-being. <laughs> no, I've had, see, I've had this percolating in my head for years. That doesn't make it better. It actually kind of makes it worse. It makes it much worse because I'm only getting started. <laughs> and like, if this works, I have at least three more hours worth to go. Because I thought this was going to be like three quarters of a page when I was going to print it out. And then it was nine pages. Yeah, I, yeah it was. I changed <laughs> the font and then it was four pages. And I was like, well, this is probably as small a font as I can read, so we'll go with that. But yeah, I'm horrified if this does well. Hopefully it does terribly, because then I have to come up with this again. But, you know, I can spew this nonsense about just about anything, so hopefully I ruined some of your childhood. The real lesson here is while we may judge other people for their crazy shit they put out, like Corey and David, we're just as crazy. We just hide it better. Yeah, and I'm not hiding it. I'm trying to level the playing field. No, we're field. bringing it to the forefront. If Corey, yeah. it would make me very happy if David Wilcox sat down with one of his gay-ass friends and watched this, and he did to us what we had been doing to him. That would be very funny. I think his only friend's his wife. I also kind of suspect he loves Pokemon, too. It's possible. Because a lot of people love it, you know? And, and, and as much as I believe it's a very dark story, it's also very near and dear to my heart, and I'd love to write the conclusion because you guys are going to puss out and make it PG, and I want right. to make it R-rated. A super fan should be handed the reins for the final chapter is what you're saying. Yeah, the, the initial Pokemon generation, we've grown past it. We want to see how it ends, and you can tell us the truth. Right. Okay. Yeah. Hootie hoo. Mamba out. <laughs>